I'm Justin Mott and welcome to my home in Hanoi, Vietnam. And if you notice that my voice sounds a little bit more crisp today, that's because I've got a brand new microphone set up right here, courtesy of my friends over at Didi. Funny thing is that I bought one of their shotgun mics for my recent trip to Kenya and I started collaborating with them because of a rhino fart. So that's the story right there. I was actually recording the rhinos and if you've never been around rhinos, their farts are like explosive. I was recording with their shotgun mic and it just Who's captured that? every Who's nuance that? of that gigantic fart. And it was pretty funny to me because I was recording an interview at the same time. And then I tagged Deity in it, got to talk with them, we decided to collaborate. So they've sent me over this shotgun mic here, this studio mic. This is the Deity S Mic 2. They sent this over to me for free, along with a bunch of other great equipment. I'm not like an audio specialist, so I don't think it's fair for me to do like a proper review about it. But anyway, I just thought I'd share that. I'll put a link in the description box below. I've, I've had problems with Rode microphones falling apart in the past. I live in Vietnam where things are quite humid and I've heard really good things about these microphones. It was nice of them to give me this equipment. If you notice I sound better, that's why. And while on the topic of equipment, what I'm gonna talk about today is why I chose to go with a Sony system for my video work over a Leica system. Now, before my trip to Kenya, before I was going there to film my personal work, my documentary work, I talked a lot about the idea of possibly, and actually I was just about definitely going to use the Leica SL2 S as my video camera. For those of you that are new here, I am a Leica shooter for all my photography. I use the Leica M system, the Leica M10D, and the Leica M. And for my commercial work, for my mom, visuals business, all of our hotel work, industrial work, all that kind of stuff, corporate documentary work, we've used the Sony system. So I was thinking about what to use for my personal documentary work. What was I going to use for my like run and gun kit? So I talked a lot about the, S, the Leica SL2S, but in the end, instead, I went with the Sony FX3, and today I'm gonna briefly go through why. So as always guys, don't forget to check out my online store at justinmott.com where I've got presets that will not make you a better photographer, but they will add some pop your images. I've also got one-on-one -on -one classes starting as low as $99 for a one hour Zoom session with you and me. And those are open to all levels of photographers interested in all genres of photography. And lastly, I've got print starting as low as $99 with free shipping worldwide. You can check all that out at justinmott.com. So why did I go with Sony over Leica? <gasps> a lot of you guys are gonna be like, what do you mean? You're a Leica diehard person. We come to your channel because of Leica. Well, I hope you come to my channel because of my work and because of my experience and because I'm honest with you guys. So today I'm just gonna be honest. I still use all my Leica equipment for my personal work. I still love my Leica M system. I'm still madly in love with my Leica M10D, but I had to make a decision about what I'm gonna start using for my personal work, for my personal documentary work. Was I gonna stay with the Leica ecosystem? Was I gonna go with their, call it maybe their flagship video camera, the Leica SL2 or the Leica SL2 and I put a lot of thought into this and I just want to be honest with you guys I'm gonna tell you exactly what happened not pointing fingers, but this is just what happened This is what led me to going with the Sony system I had talked with Leica locally or regionally about borrowing and loaning two SL2 S's because I, I just couldn't risk like going there with with one camera I was also gonna loan some of their L series lenses when I need autofocus and I was gonna use my existing M lenses when I didn't need autofocus because some of the documentary work I was doing one specific project I could shoot locked off and a manual focus, but some of the other work I was doing was gonna require autofocus, so hence the need for the L series lenses. So I had a laundry list of stuff that I wanted. Uh, unfortunately, you know, for a lot of different reasons, they didn't come through. That's just what happened. To be fair, they had a couple things. They had one SL2S for me, and they had uh, one L series lens, but it wasn't enough, to be honest. I knew I was gonna be shooting a lot of different things, so I needed a variety of different lenses to cover that. Some things I could get close with the Northern White Rhinos, I can get close. It takes a little time, but I get close to them. Some of the other things I was working on, I couldn't get as close. Uh, and so anyway, like bottom line is I had to make a decision. About two days before my flight to Kenya, I had to make a decision. And I just couldn't risk like buying those two cameras because I really didn't know yet. I'm really like a big advocate when you can to test it, use it, and like feel it because got all sorts of things are gonna come up that you didn't get a chance, that you didn't think of. I was already using Sony for a commercial work, so I had that decision to make, like buy a couple like SL2Ss or use the one that they let me borrow and one lens. 
but it just wasn't enough. Like it, that's what it is. In the end, it wasn't enough. I was worried I was gonna be. I was worried I was gonna be underlensed. I was worried about only having one camera, not a backup. Again, I had a lot at stake here. It took a lot to get access to this, and I was going for a long period of time. It was a big deal. So, in the end, last minute, I did my research and I went with Sony because. I've already used Sony for my commercial work, my business mod visuals, like I mentioned before, for like five years. We've used the A7S II, and we're just about to make an upgrade anyways to either the A7S III, or what I actually went with was the FX3, which is essentially an A7S III, but with like a different chassis, and you get the handle, you get the audio handle thing. So, but that was very appealing to me because I knew I'd be doing interviews, I knew I was gonna be collecting ambient sound. The FX3 at about $4,000, uh, have the audio handle with the XLR jack, a great camera for where I shoot too. I mean, a lot of people have had problems with cameras getting hot, overheating. This camera, the FX3 has that built-in fan system. I didn't know how the, I'm not saying like the, the SL2S will overheat. Uh, autofocus on the Sony is incredible. Again, I'm not, I didn't compare this because I haven't really shot proper video with the SL2S, but I went with the sure thing because I knew, I knew my Sony A7S II was impeccable in low light. I knew the autofocus was great. I knew it would just be better on the FX3. And then also just the capabilities of what this camera can do as, as far as the codec that it can output to like a Ninja 5 or something like that. It just kind of like was better at every single level for video work. And it's also to have all those built-in screws in the chassis was really nice too because it's easy to like sort of outrig it out. I mean, you could always buy a cage for the SL2S, but this already has all those screws in it. So attaching a side handle, attaching a monitor, all that was just like very easy with this. But really it just came down to like if if I had got the camera in time, I would have tested it out, but this was just too big, too risky. Not playing the blame game because a lot of things were at factor. It was Tet, it's COVID, so a lot of things. Um, but that's why I went with the system. And shooting for three weeks every single day, 4.30 a.m. to you know six o'clock at night, in the dust, in the heat, didn't have any rain, but it performed impeccably. I'm not gonna go through all the details of it, but it was just the autofocus was amazing. The way it could kit out was amazing. Having that handle was amazing. Again, you can add that stuff on another camera with a cage too, but it's just like already built there. It didn't overheat at all. I mean, it was so hot in the middle of the day sometimes. It's even hotter here in Vietnam with the humidity. Tons of dust. I mean, I was on the ground. I'm following rhinos all day long, and it just, the rhinos when they run, the dust kicks up when you walk. It's so dry in Kenya, especially this time of year. It hadn't rained in a long time, so it just, Everything I threw at it, it handled. The only complaint about it is aesthetically, it's not as pleasing as the SL2S as a still camera. Obviously, it's nowhere compared to what the SL2 is. It's a decent stills camera, but I don't see myself using it for that. Autofocus, incredible. Menu system, not loving it. Definitely a huge improvement from the A7S II, but as a dedicated video camera, I'm not using this as a hybrid camera, but as a dedicated run and gun documentary video camera, this has been perfect. Uh, I mean, I think there's no better way to test it out than the way I did it. Three weeks in the field, tough conditions, moving around, a variety of different setups, handheld, locked off. I also bought an adapter to use my Leica M lenses on it, and that was really cool because it has its own look. Sometimes I needed the autofocus, so I went with a Sigma 24 to 70. <gasps> I know I'm not a zoom guy, but honestly, autofocus, having a zoom lens for certain situations when you're following people around, when you're doing run and gun, it just made sense and I'm very glad I did it. Overall, make your own choice. It's gonna be different for everyone. Cir circumstances took me down this path, but I'm glad I did. I'm happy with this camera. Great value, great function, does everything I needed to do. So bravo, two thumbs up to the Sony FX3. Again, can't compare it to the SL2S, but I, I don't regret it at all. I've never used the SL2S the way I'm using this camera now, but I honestly, I, I just can't see it performing the way this camera performed. It's just for video specifically, I just can't see it happening. It's just this has more this has more functions, better autofocus, and just like technical specs are just way better on this camera. So for those of you that have been asking me, for those of you that are confused, that's why I bought this camera. That's why I went with the Sony FX3 and happy that I did. If you have any questions about this, any questions about the camera in general, you can ask me in the comment section, guys. These videos will be out soon. These documentaries will be out soon so you can see some of the clips. You can see what this camera can do. You can see how it performs. Maybe I'll do a review about this camera in the future. Who knows? We'll see. Thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget, again, to check out my online store at justinmott.com. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to have a wonderful day.